And though the path be fraught with tribulation, know that it leads to the land of our greatness, and that we walk it with you. Such were the words the gods spoke to the progenitor of my race when they sought to guide us from our base origins into a fruition of potential. The words have been in my heart every day of my reign, but now they are embodied. Welcome, beckoned. At last, this city will be complete. I am the Primos of the Colossi people. As I lead them in politics, I lead them in prayer. The messenger of the gods, one summoned to bring the word of faith back to our people. I always assumed that the beckoned would be one of my own kind. But you bear the cipher. Your role cannot be made more clear. The goddess has shepherded my people for generations. She was responsible for the growth of my people. Somehow, we were found unworthy of her. I have prayed to learn why, but her anger must be far too great. This is greater than any city or any temple that you will find in this world. Of that I assure you. But the city, though magnificent, is only half completed. The Colossi are the children of the Titans. We are the inheritors of their will, and we are the ones that will shepherd this world into a new age. This land is the crucible by which my people might be forged to their new destiny. Vicious and inhospitable, it rebukes my people's every step. Many are the artifacts strewn throughout this world, but the cipher of Athene... I have seen its outline traced in tomes and scrolls, but never in person. Bearing it makes you an embodiment of her power, Beckoned. She sees and hears through you. Because we are all of us, my whole people, incomplete. Because we are not worthy enough, not deserving enough, to see such wonders of the gods. And I thought that failure was a finality. I have prayed to the gods in seclusion in hopes of an answer. But they were as quiet as the silent choir. Now the beckoned is come. With you, the gods can bear witness to us atoning for our inadequacies. We must start at once, beginning with the wreath of absolution. Something no Primos would ever wish to wear. They are only made in times of great need, and we must prove to the gods our devotion. The Wreath of Absolution can only be created from the hands guided by Athene. I must ask you to assemble it. First, a golden prayer circlet is needed to serve as its base. The art of crafting one is all but lost to us, but I require one all the same. The last Primos to wear a Wreath of Absolution, Arches, is buried with one such circlet. Sikandra led you to me, did she not? Then she will lead you to the circlet. He led my people into the times that you see today. The gods did not favor his reign, clearly. It lies in his crypt, in the darkest pits beneath the city. They are old halls, and they have fallen into disuse. I understand there might be trepidations in taking such an artifact from my predecessor's crypt, but I assure you, it is ordained. The times we have arrived at are desperate, and when the heavens show their intent, one cannot stand too much on ceremony. The Silent Choir is a group of our most faithful followers, and serve me 
as I serve the gods. So deep is their faith that they never speak upon entering service. You return. Well, the Primos has not graced the ears of his subjects in ages. What has he said to you? The circlet of Arcas. And Anakatos expects me to lead you to it? Has his reclusion left him senseless? Has he forgotten his history as well as his people? Very well. As I cannot refuse the Primos, I will meet you in the crypts in the undersewers of the city. Let us deal with this as quickly as possible. You are the first to hear his voice in some time. I almost thought he would join his acolytes in their silent pact. But his prolonged absence from his people has taken its toll on his judgment. Does the crypt of Arches have no sanctity to him? He... I have had chances to speak of Arches before, but it is not fitting for me to discuss him. Not now. We can find it in the crypts beneath the city's sewers. They are old structures, forgotten as the city was built above them. Mm -hmm. Well, you are quite small, are you not? I better watch where I place my feet. Oh, I only jest. Good tidings, Beckoned. Would that I could help you with something, but I await the Primos. Others may complain of their toils here. I have done well for myself. My family brought much of their wealth here from our old homeland. Without my patronage, much would be difficult to acquire here. I keep the trade brisk enough to afford me a sense of humor. We are the mightiest city in the world. Our stature proves it. Is there a skyline higher than ours in all of Armalur? There is not. He is powerful. Fit for the title of Primos. And yet, faith guides his actions more than the needs of his people. I cannot begrudge him his priorities, given the times we are in. However, I cannot but feel a bit ignored. Greetings, Beckoned. How goes the work you have taken on? There are always things to look after in this city, but keeping busy is a good way to ignore a burdened spirit. I have a bad feeling about this. The city regularly sends surveyors into the sewers, but normally with an escort. But the guard has been stretched thin of late. It is rather annoying that as high as we are from the teeth, we can still fall prey to the mischief of sprites. They've squirreled away some items in their dens below the sewer. A brooch, an idol, and a mason's hammer. It is a rather embarrassing story, but when the city was on the ground, a troll cub managed to hide in one of our sewers. I am a member of the guard, like any other. I am responsible for helping to manage the peace of the city. There are always smaller items of inquiry or aid that the people of Idilla need. This board allows the community to assist them. If you found a task you wish to take on from the petition board and complete it, I will recompense you for your trouble. Ah, the famed Beckoned comes to me at last. Admittedly, my request might be the smallest you will hear, but I wish to voice it nonetheless. I do not forget Arches, or what he did for my people. He led us here, and started this city, but most cannot see past his flaws. How do you find our city, Beckoned? Grand, is it not? It is the great island of progress, as I see it. But even it cannot forget the world it left below. All the rocks you see, here and in the sewers, once rested in the teeth of Naros. This is a place for those who are weary of their burdens. If you feel so, you can rest for a while. I'm just one who's intent on maintaining the cultural integrity of her people. We were once no nobler than the Jotun or the Etin. Some would purge this history, but then how will we remember it? To preserve the past, 
All around us is the great chisel and hammer of progress, keen on dragging my people towards enlightenment. But such progress means nothing without context. I wish for someone who can find artifacts of my ancestors, reminders of our simpler times. Very good. I'll reward you for any artifacts you can find, but larger artifacts will do well for both of us. I await your findings. They are little things, of no intrinsic value, but as my people are so convinced to make progress, these artifacts are the few records of who we once were. They are strewn throughout the teeth of Naros. They may be hidden in forgotten corners, or carried by beasts as trophies. And it would seem that the deliverer of my people has found me at last. Many honored greetings to you, Beckoned. If you would, I have more than pleasantries to discuss. Like many, I seek your prowess. The beckon shows the path the Colossi must walk again. So it has always been claimed. It is a grand city, worthy of protection. I strive to guard its citizens from the menaces below us, in the teeth of Naros. Looking at the Colossi here, you will find we have it in ourselves to be truly great. But we are also capable of much violence. I have lost much to the beasts of this land. I aim to ensure that none share this sorrow. A culling. Though the Colossi are a people of faith, more and more of us are reverting to the savage ways of our ancestors. The lowest of these doubters become marauders, bloodthirsty and violent capable of nothing but wrath. They must be purged. I thank you. It is high time we bring their savagery to an end. Each marauder should carry a totem of some sort. Bring those to me as proof of your deeds. The marauders have lost their reason, but not their strength. If they catch you unawares, you will not have much time left. They roam the lands below the city. I do not doubt that you will find them if you seek them out in the wilds. What is it? Unless you can somehow convince the guards to let me leave the city, you are only wasting my time. I'm sorry. It just makes you a little crazed, you see, being locked inside this city like a penned animal. All I want is to leave for a short time to travel to the Warren and check on my wife, Galatea, but I cannot leave. My wife and I were separated when the city was raised. I believe her to still be in the teeth of Naros. I hope she is unharmed. This city is the child I never had. I poured myself into this stone, these edifices, these reliefs. But now I have been here so long that these walls have lost their charm. They are only the bars of a prison to me. I am one of Idilla's finest masons, so much so that it seems I am an institution amongst my people. It seemed nice at first, but they handle me like a work of art, with too much caution. The stone used to build this city was dug out from the Warren. It was our main quarry, but much of it is inaccessible now. The rest is home to beasts. I did not choose to leave her beckoned. I wanted her to come with me, but she can be difficult to move to action sometimes. But I cannot retrieve her now, for I am one of the city's finest masons. The guard are under orders not to let me leave, so I do not die. All I want to know is that she is unharmed but I've done so well for this city that I am forbidden from departing. Hm. Well, you can certainly try, but Galatea is stubborn as stone. Would you truly beckon? That is something. At least I will be certain that she is unharmed. I left her in the ruins of the Warren. 
the city's old quarry. You should search there for her. We were separated when the city was raised. I last saw her in the quarries of the Warren. Welcome to the Idilla Market, Beckoned. Can I interest you in a freshly honed weapon? Our city didn't always have a place among the clouds, but Colossi ingenuity changed that. While it saves us from the wilds, it is my weapons that save the guard down below. I construct weapons, and then I sell them. Most Colossi are uncomfortable with their hands unfilled, so I endeavor to fill them. Would you like one? A weapon, I mean. Your hands are small. We prefer the spear, for it suits us most in these lands, against this wilderness. But our travels have taken us many places, and I can craft weapons of every shape, and all are equally deadly. Shall I hone your weapons for you? Everything one requires, one will find in the concourse market. Weapons, armors, and healing implements. I was one of the first to settle in Idilla, and I will be the last to leave if it ever comes to that. Many pine for our home of old, but not me. The clouds are my refuge now. My days as a guard are behind me, but I know my way around arms and armor. I can patch it all up. Welcome, Beckoned. Any who explore the teeth of Naros should not do so without my wares. Not many of my kind are drawn to horticulture, but it teaches me patience and satisfaction. The plants of the teeth are strange compared to those from our original homeland. They require much attention and deft care, and as I've found, tiny hands. You would make a good apothecary, I wager. There are miracles, great and small, to be seen in this world if you know where to look. But the gods had no use for subtlety with us. Look at this city. You can see their love of us. Do you see any armor in my stock you approve of? I handcraft all of my work. Armor is my passion, my livelihood. No one in all of Idilla can provide protection of higher quality. I am reputed with good reason. Though our skin looks like stone, we are but flesh. As any mortal race, we need armor to protect ourselves. There is no finer city than this. Have you seen any other place in armor lore that can match our horizon? Have you found streets more pristine and appealing? You have not, because that is an impossibility. Ah, the beckoned. You won't find a better sage crafter in all of Idilla than me. This city is a promise between us and the gods, but it is also a promise between us and the races of Amalur. My people will grow into the majesty of this city, and with the Empire to come, we will spread the gods' light. Attention to detail is not overly common amongst the Colossi. Much can escape the notice of one so elevated. But the facets and powers of my gems hold so much meaning and power. How could I ignore them? There is a lesson in sage crafting. Even the smallest jewel can turn a common sword into a deadly weapon. I am sure you shall find something in my stock to your liking, Beckon. Our ancestor race, the Myru, had no skill with magic. You can see how much we've progressed. With our arcane skill, we set this whole city to float among the clouds. But such ability must be tempered with appropriate humility, so the Primos has taught. I do not envy his position. He must lead us after his predecessor's grave mishaps. However, he will bring much glory to our people should his goal be realized. Though magic is new to our people, I can craft fine artifacts for it. I bear my skill proudly. There are those that stand by their spears, but even our greatest warriors acknowledge the worth of magic. Beckoned? 
It seems my preconceptions were off. But I still need your divine aid. The plague spreads. Are you enjoying its splendors? This fair city is rich with them. Even in the sewers, under its gleaming exterior, lies a feat of engineering unrivaled by other cities in Amalur. The Lycaos breeds thinkers, philosophers. They spend their days pondering the greater meaning of existence. Such are their debates that they shake the very foundations of Idylla. For some time, non-believers have touted that the relevance of the Lycaos has passed, but I'm confident all it needs is one brilliant lecturer to stoke its fires. I am a mason, one of many caretakers of the sewers. A hidden menace. The secret hoard. Though few acknowledge them, the rats are the great threat to this city. In my younger days, I hunted the vermin with a force of will unequaled by the greatest of the theologians in Lycaeus. I have worked on this city for all my lifetime. The sewers that run below it are my masterpiece. But this work of art is besmirched. By rats! These foul vermin run rampant in my catacombs, tainting it with their fitted presence. Try as I might, I cannot best the scourge. But you, Beckett, your divine intervention is needed. I have never known beasts with such low cunning and high birth rates. They are fearless as they are disgusting. I have pinpointed a much-traveled route used by the rats and seeded it with traps that can be activated on command. Find the levers that activate those traps. They've been placed on a ledge overlooking the route. When you see the rats pass below, simply pull the levers as they approach the traps. Slay the filthy vermin! Once, I hunted the rats that plague our sewers with such zeal. But I have worked myself to exhaustion and am forced to rest here. Though I rest, the rats do not. Please, find the traps I laid in the sewer and lay waste to them. Greetings, Beckoned. Have you come to pass the time? If we wait long enough, Stratton might even have another play ready when we're done. Like Stratton and Andronicus before him, I am a writer. But I tend towards essays and dissertations rather than metaphor and prose to deliver my messages. I was a close friend of Andronicus. I have reviewed every production displayed in his theater for those not in attendance. In the years since, I have been told that I've been unkind to Stratton. But I beg to differ. I am honest. I have mixed feelings for our dear playwright. He was once the tragedian prodigy of Andronikos himself. Many looked to him to fill the master's shoes when Andronikos died. Most believe Stratton has succeeded. I am unconvinced. I plan to attend, as I do with all the productions held in the city, though my hopes for it are not high. A mighty playwright, Andronikos knew that the gods would be pleased should our art reflect their majesty. Much like Idylla itself, the theater was constructed as much for its utility as it was as a tribute to Athene. Incredible. You must be the beckoned. What are you doing here? It is a place of respite, or a monument to the god of boredom. Count the columns, or the straws in the bed if you need something to do. Or, better yet, get out of here. I've seen the bulk of his works. They are often pretentious and bloody. 
I enjoyed Andronikos' satires myself. It knew better days, I think. The current master, Stratton, can keep the people entertained, but not musing. I am a frequent patron of the theater, but I grow tired of Stratton's work. When will Irina produce something? Many are waiting in anticipation for Stratton's work, but he insists the work will not be ready until a grand fit of inspiration comes. I am not blind to the fact that our city has a troubled past. There is little we tragedians can do about it save continue to perform for our audiences. This is as much a temple as a theater erected in the honor of the craft. There is no greater celebration of plays in all of Amalur. I have a sprawling range as a tragedian, I assure you, but I require the chance to prove it. Perhaps the humbled is my great opportunity. There is so much that needs to be done for my new work. Will I ever see the end of it? He was my mentor. I apprenticed as a tragedian under Andronikos. I sharpened his quills, blotted his parchment, and here I am today. I had written a piece for him, the unanswered. Unfinished, but unplayable. It was too bitter. A greater subject for my work I cannot think of. How intricate my people are, with their vulnerabilities and strengths. I was a tragedian before I became the master playwright I am today, studying under Andronikos himself. No one knows more than I do about literature and colossi theater, except perhaps for master Andronikos, but he is, unfortunately, no longer with us. I despair that he will never see the productions I have written since his passing. Despite all I have accomplished, I feel that I am still working to crawl out from under his shadow. Perhaps with my newest play, The Humbled, I can finally do so. The fine establishment you see here is the Theater of Andronikos. We tragedians and our loyal audience are the cultural center of Idilla. Questions of ethics, morals, and cultivation are explored through the metaphor of my plays. Entire worlds are created and destroyed on that stage behind me. I have not acted in some time. I am eager to know when my next performance is. I will not lie. Earlier in my career I played the beckoned, though I believe I took the role in a different direction. It's a great accomplishment, to be sure, but I think that my people often forget that we are the project of the gods, not this city. That is why I focus on theater. Rather than focusing on the city, we should be focusing on ourselves. Uh, in truth, I find the tragedies we've made recently to be rather dreary. I prefer satires myself. The Humbled seems an interesting production. There is an opportunity for much, if some of the tone is changed. Athene is the goddess of wisdom, but she is also a goddess of art. We must appease this aspect of her nature as well. As it does not involve true might, the profundity of theater is lost on my brethren. But the spectacle is still enjoyed. I hope you find the city to your liking, Beckoned. I am a tragedian of several years. I have often been cast as the villain, and I'm rather ashamed to find myself comfortable in such a role. Of course, you must exercise all of yourself to attain true strength. I long to try other roles, but I am unsure where to start. Stratton loves this place. I think he has some qualms with living up to his forebearer, Andronikos, but he still tries. While these halls are to serve as a home for all forms of the art of stage, tragedy is what usually abounds here. 
There are a few of us that devote ourselves to the art. Mostly just the ones you see milling around here listlessly. This stage is the tapestry on which Master Stratton paints his productions. You are the first of your kind to see it. You should be honored. I am the custodian of the theater. Stratton concerns himself with the art, and I the material. And I handle the audience as well. If they are rude, I eject them with impunity. The story of my people is the stuff of great theater, in a way. From humble beginnings, we're to ascend to the highest station in Amalur. The master is the playwright who runs the theater, and uses it to house his productions. With just a few tragedians and a manuscript, he is quite capable of rendering any historical scene in exquisite detail and vibrancy up on that stage. He gains influence daily, and I am certain his is the mind that will lead the Colossi into a new age of enlightenment. It is a popular locale for many, and we gain more followers every day. Master Stratton's plays invoke the imagination and spirit of the Colossi such that few can resist. Mind yourself in the sewers. A majority of the tunnels are safe for travel, but accidents can happen. Lawbreakers and Idilla do not enjoy the luxury of internment. All lawbreakers are immediately subjected to combat. It may seem severe, but we are a wise people. None have had need to test this punishment. Least of all you, I am sure. Many covet your connection with the goddess Athene. I hope you realize the impression that leaves on us all. Mine is the duty to safeguard the Colossi from any threat. So Sikandra has charged all the guard. The Primos is the leader of our people in prayer and in other matters of life. They are appointed by Athene herself. I understand that you and she have met. She is powerful, is she not? Truly a paragon of might and virtue. Beckoned, I admit that I have eyed you with some interest. I await for the chance to debate you personally. The Colossi believe that ours is the greatest city in all of Armalore, Beckoned. I am inclined to agree. We were strong enough to rip it from the clutches of the Earth. How could there be any doubt? No doubt the gods favor us because we have the strength to perpetuate their message. This is the center of theology in Idilla, Beckoned. My people attend to debate any topic they like with whomever they like. We leave social standing at the door. All that matters in the Lycaos is virtue and a sound argument. I am a student of Master Onesimos, and I hold the highest rank among all of his disciples. My current point of study is the nature of strength and its relation to virtue. The, the beckoned? Do you seek to debate? You should speak to Master Onesimus to arrange one. We would be thrilled to hear a lecture given by the Beckoned. Oh, uh, the city? It is... well, it is grand, as everyone says. I wish I could say more of it, but I spend most of my time in the Lycaos. Though the Lycaos is open to all who wish to debate, some choose to spend their lives mastering the arguments like me. I hope it will make me a stronger Colossi. I am, uh, the youngest of Onesimos' students. Uh, there is much I have yet to learn. Ah, so the Beckoned has arrived. Are you here for a debate? I've an astute interest in researching the Terex. They are noble, lethal beasts. They can match a colossi in might, in the right numbers. The life of a guard is always busy in these lands. Take it from me. The city is grand, though it has borne much doubt and anguish. But I believe the stones we placed can weather these storms. We are strong, but not immortal. Though our skin resembles stone, mortal blood flows beneath it. The Lycaos is the essence of the Colossi. 
I am glad to see it run by a great thinker such as Onesimos. The scholar truly has mastered the art of discourse. Though it has been years, I believe he can still make a persuasive argument on any topic. Yes, Beckett. I am pleased to serve how I can. Our city stands the highest in all of Amalur, and that means that it is the greatest. It is no coincidence that our culture and virtue have flourished up here among the clouds. It is built to honor the struggle we all must go through to attain wisdom, and we embody that struggle every day. I am a relatively new debater, but already I have made my mark. I outrank face in the master's eyes, though we became disciples on the same day. My area of interest is the nature of war. Ah, you must be the beckoned. I must say that you are the most peculiar specimen I have ever glimpsed. Your fate, I cannot think but I have been blinded, but you are the only flaw in my gaze. The first of many failures. I have seen the portents of the future, and the old Primos wears the garb we all will be shrouded in. I have always been able to snatch glimpses of the future. But very recently, since news came that you appeared in our land, these dim half-visions of mine have burst into full glorious sight. I can see the fate of this city now, of all who live within it. Except for you, curiously enough. The city will hold longer than this academy, but all things in this world fall to ruin. Every morning I wake and despair, for I see the mighty walls of Idilla and the Tower of the Primos crumble to dust before my eyes, replaced by an empty sky. I tell you, this academy's destruction is assured, the details are vague to me, but there will come a time when theology means nothing to the Colossi. Academics, scholarly pursuits, all of it gone. In its place, the savagery of the Myru. Mark my words. I attend these final debates as the school enters its death throes to chronicle them for the future. What do you think of our humble academy, Chosen One? Could I perhaps convince you to debate one of my prodigies? Surely the beckoned of Athene would be a worthy lecturer. He did not have the strength needed to appeal to the gods, though he was named Primos. His virtue faded over time. Many argue the meaning of the beckoned. Are you a conduit of the gods or are you merely their messenger? I know what you are, though. You are the strength of the gods incarnate. If anything, this city is great for separating the weak and impious from the strong. Not all have kept the promises we made to the gods. Some have left our city to live in the wilds, as if they were the Myru. Fools. I will admit, times are difficult for the school. Few have the fire within them to debate. They seem to prefer moping. That is what we were before the gods sought to raise us up. Life for the Myru was not as you see here. The Myru cared only for base pleasures, carnage, conquest, and power. They were far from the enlightened people the Colossi are today. I am the master of the Lycaos. I do what I can to enlighten the minds of those who enter my academy. I despair that the Lycaos has passed under the awareness of one so blessed. Our academy is the center of conversation for philosophy and theology in Idilla. Would you be opposed to joining us for a dialogue or two? It would be an honor. The Spears, you mean? They are for the debate. Wonderful! 
With the hard times about us, I worry that our long-kept traditions will eventually be lost as the school's influence wanes. Your involvement is sure to spark interest in the Lycaeus once again. Now, let us begin. In your first debate, you face Thace, one of my most promising students. Greetings, Beckoned. I... I take it that Onesimus wishes me to go through with this debate? Very well. You... you are? Then, uh, I will begin. I mean, here is the topic of discussion. A torrential storm sweeps a youngling and a full-grown colossi into the flow of a river. A big one. A river, I mean. Now, there is only time to save one. Which should one choose to save? And you, you would choose to spare the potential for strength over the certainty of it. That's, well, that's a stance few might stand by. Very well, let us begin the debate. You smashed him senseless, Beckoned. Why, this is the form all debates take here at the Lycaos. Opening statements are made, and combat determines the victor. I am unsure what else you were expecting. That said, will you allow others to challenge you? You appear to be quite skilled. Speak to Sisters. He is eager to debate with you. Is it my turn to challenge you, Beckoned? I am eager to test you. And myself. I remember when this city sat on firm earth instead of thin air. Those were dark times, where daily we grappled with the wilds of the teeth of Naros. But we endured, and now we have carved a near paradise for ourselves among the clouds. No finer city exists. There is no greater home, no event, no thought, no prayer is raised that does not get tried and tested in our debates. I am a student of the Masters, and there is no greater joy for me than the debate. I truly love it here. Currently, my studies have me exploring the value of life versus that of the spirit. I am glad. Tell me, what is the most effective display of strength in the following scenario? On a trip across a vast desert, you and a companion encounter a boulder. It is an airborne boulder, and it crushes your friend. He tells you, Leave me, Beckoned. Even were you to lift this boulder from off my battered body, I would be but half a colossi. What would the strong do? You would save him? Beckon, you fight like a colossi, but you certainly do not think like one. Where would he be with his body obliterated? He would be half a man, and half a man can never be whole. His friends and family would pity him, shun him. I will best you in this debate, Beckoned. I must. An absolutely scintillating debate, Beckoned. Sisters didn't stand a chance. Are you ready for another? Find my disciple Zeno when you are. He wishes to challenge you. Speak to Zeno. He wishes to test his intellect against yours. You are the beckoned? I wish to challenge you. Sister and Thais are worthy opponents. That you have debated them is impressive indeed. Especially for one so short. You are one of the greatest debaters I have ever seen, Beckoned. I hope I present a worthy challenge. My query for you is simple. What makes a war worth fighting? That is a suitable response, if a bit subjective. I am of the belief that nothing makes war more worth fighting than a worthy opponent, such as yourself. Prepare yourself for debate. 
Zeno's argument was hastily prepared drivel next to your well-constructed thesis. Fine, an older disciple, wishes to debate with you. Speak to Fine. She is my eldest disciple, very powerful and wise. A true challenge awaits you. You've defeated many of Master Onisimos' students, Beckoned. I am the oldest, the most powerful. Prepare yourself to face the Master's most gifted student. Excellent. You've done well thus far, but I have another query to test you. Does might make right? That is an intriguing point, but it runs counter to the core of Colossi values. Our culture hinges on the belief that strength is given by the gods to those with the virtue to wield it. Let us debate the issue. My virtue shall prove that you are wrong. Beckoned, welcome back. Have you been enjoying your debates? Indeed. You have defeated all of my students, Beckoned. The issue I pose to you is this, brought to my mind by your overwhelming strength. Can those with absolute power, such as yourself, have courage? If one enters battle with victory all but assured, can one also be called brave? You have proven differently here at the Lycaos. Very well. Let us debate. You have my underlying gratitude for participating in our competitions. Please take this as a token of my appreciation. Word of your scintillating lectures is sure to bring attention to our school. Already there are more spectators in the Lycaos than there have been in years. Your thoughts guard you well in combat. May this talisman offer you similar protection. Though we were all taught sound lessons, my students and I have never seen this many in the Lycaos. Truly, you have helped us.